So Jimmy, going back with the um, this Harvard incubation program and launching Lesson Squad and then all the cool things that have come from Lesson Squad, take us down that that trip from just coming up with the concept of what it is to getting it to where it is now. Sure, yeah. So concept is relatively, I don't know, four years old. Just as a great example, this is going to run into the whole like sitting on things. I was teaching and I was having a lot more luck teaching than some of my peers because I was at the time, things like Twitter, where, where Twitter had just sort of started to take um, and this is sort of pre-Instagram and I was able to build a crazy teaching roster to the point where I was giving students to other teachers. Mm-hmm. And then it started to hit me. I was like, wait a minute, I know how to use these digital tools from playing in bands and being on the road and, 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 and figuring things out. But there's all these other educators that didn't go that road and don't know how to use these tools. So I was like, what if we could make the tools for them? Mm-hmm. And so that was kind of the first idea that I jotted down. And then my next step was to do a proof of concept completely non-digital so i literally had other teachers i was giving them students and they were putting a percentage in my mailbox like literally dropping off an envelope of cash to me Smart. because i helped fill their roster and i was like okay here's what we've learned we learned that if we give the teacher students and they don't have to handle x amount of the work they will pay for that convenience so that was cool and i happened to be uh, i was consulting at the time for um, a venture-backed startup called Cosmo that Josh Hoffmanson, who's co-founder of Lesson Squad, was the yeah. founder of that company. And I was telling him what I had been doing, and he was like, do you want help? Do you want help making that digital? I was like, yes, I do. So then we did the first V1, and we launched that. We put some teachers on there, and then we started testing. And at that point, um, Josh had taken a break from the startup and had started going to Harvard Business School. So then since he was at HBS, he applied for us to be in the Harvard Innovation Labs Venture Incubation Program. And so that's how we got in there, which was amazing. Like I don't have a college degree. So for me to be able to kind of roll on to the Harvard campus and, and check things out and just sort of be in that community and see how it thinks and operates was amazing. I was so impressed, which I, I, I wouldn't say expected to be, but just, just by the culture that they had, at least from what I was exposed to, absolutely amazing the way that you know in the program we were in other companies rooting for each other the way that they so openly networked um was really really great and we basically took you know we we got into it two separate times and so we took two years and basically the whole time josh was in grad school and we tested everything with lesson squad from lessons to then, okay, can we add this piece of tech and expand it, you know, to be nationwide, did that. Ooh, can we add retail? And then that became a big thing. Um, And so we really did our testing and got our full foundation there. Um, But for me, that was a whole experience, just more or less learning from the culture. And then Josh was kind enough where I got to even go sit in on a class at HBS, which was a whole experience where they give you the case to say, hey, if you're gonna come to the class, here's the case and you have to read the the case and then go in and participate. And that was, uh, that was super cool. But yeah, those two years were crucial because it allowed us to make all the mistakes that you have to make when building a company. Right. You have to try everything. And then thankfully it netted out to where we had things when we really launched the whole foundation, everyone in the industry, as we started showing to all these instrument manufacturers and major retailers, there wasn't anything to really poke holes in. It was like, wow, it's a really great foundation. Let's start working together. Uh, right. We even made this rule. Any manufacturer that we would show it to, that we'd show Lesson Squad to, we would never try to sell anything. They had to ask, how can I use this? Right. Because that's how we would, that would validate that we have something worth using. And you got the uh, emotional attachment then. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And so that's where we're at. And we're still an early stage company and, figuring that out but man the last like 10 weeks have been a a roller coaster in growth but also like the the occasional dumpster fire like oh the tracking link for this retailer isn't working this happened here oh you just had 50 new people sign up in the last hour like make there's just all this different stuff that you're always thinking about yeah um 
and that, that's also the fun of it. It's the fun of the ride. But yeah, the Harvard Innovation Lab and their venture incubation program, crucial. And if I could tell anybody who's starting a company, just to, you know, this is a common saying, fail fast. It's the truest thing. Go make all the mistakes you can and try everything as early as possible. Because at that point, it will be the most inexpensive. And you can just take that knowledge. You'll get quicker to your, your actual product. Wow. I had to keep in mind, especially with the big dot side of things, uh, the other company that I'm a part of, in the beginning, we would hit stuff that would just make, I would feel embarrassed. Like, you know, I can't believe that this is, uh, this is going to make us look bad kind of thing. And that's going to happen over and over again. You don't realize that in the beginning until it happens over and over again. Great and, call. Man. And once you realize that, dude, even Amazon screws up and makes themselves look bad. It's okay. Yep. You know, it's, yeah, it's literally learn. part of it. Yeah. I'm super glad you brought that up. Yeah. There were definitely times where, cause I'd been, you know, on the retail side of this in the industry since I was like 16, 17, working at a drum shop and figuring things out. So I had all these relationships from when I was a kid, like I was going to NAMM at 17, 18 years old. And so I, that's when I started to meet these people. And for the first time, the, the industry and some of these long friendships I've had, even like calling Rich to advise, like, you never want to look bad or, or risk a relationship on it. So I have this extra tension thing where I'd be calling my co-founder, Josh, but Josh, is it almost done? Or is this fixed yet? Like, we can't have it like this. Like, cause my heart's going like this. And he's like, why do you like, well, he didn't ask it this way. I'm more acid to myself and he soothed me very nicely yeah. as the co-founder that he is. I'm freaking out. And he's asking probably, what's going on. I'm like, well, I've had these relationships since I was a teenager. And this is the first time that like I'm putting this certain level of risk out there, yeah. right? Where it's like, oh man. Um, but yeah, so exactly what you're saying, you are going to look bad at times. Yeah. You know? But you, I, I don't think you'll ever look bad as you think you actually do, unless it's something catastrophic. Yeah. That sensitivity is important though. You know? mm -hmm. Oh, agreed. Yeah. Agreed. So yeah, yeah. so you know as you said that, which I love, I would say be that sensitive about it because it's how you're going to make the better product and the better decision. Um, just emotionally, it might suck a little more. Right. Well, <laughs> and so I, I think it's an amazing offering and, and the site is live and it's, you can use it, lessonsquad.com. You can use it if you're a, a, a person or a parent that wants to get lessons for any instrument. You could find an instructor and if you're a teacher, it's a great way to have your schedule filled, find more students, the e-commerce and all that stuff is handled through the site. And not only that, um, say you look up my profile on LessonSquad.com, you're going to see a list and a picture and a quote about every product that I use and recommend. And so if you're a teacher and you have your little lesson store, Jim can teach lessons on Lesson Squad. He can recommend the Rich Redmond drumsticks, the Black Sheep Beater, Fundamentals of Drumming for Kids, all these products that he uses, and he might make a little taste from the from yep. purchasing that product. This is brilliant. Yep, exactly. We literally took the old brick and mortar model, which was lessons in the back, retail in the front, and put it in the power of the end user. And that was the big thing. It was how do we make the day-to-day -day musician win? Because that was, again, like I got to the point where I was teaching, gigging, had a full, I didn't, but I had no days off. And I had reached sort of the ceiling. So it's like, how do you improve life for those folks? It's like, okay, here are the digital tools. And now here's another revenue stream mm -hmm. that, in my opinion, they should have been making the whole way. But now that we can help bring that to light, awesome. And then the truth of the matter too, it's then a win for the retailer because they're getting your influence on their sales, right? Which is huge. And then the other part, it's also a win for the manufacturer. When they have artist relations, we allow them to see the value of their artist relations or of their artist roster, right? So they'll see the list. They'll see how many page views an artist is getting, how many product clips, how many sales, if they teach or not. And, and artist relations has never had that data set before. So we really look at it like we're enriching the entire industry and helping progress it forward. How about that, Jim? That's value, man, right there. That's solving a problem, identifying a problem and solving it. Yep. Yeah.